In this video, we'll go through your first environment diagram. So all environment diagrams start with this global frame, which is a default namespace for the outermost indent of your code. Um, and so let's get started with the first line. So this first line has the assignment A equals 1. Now assignment has a particular rule involved with it, and here it is. So we need to evaluate all the expressions on the right hand side. In this case, there's only one expression, and the expression is a primitive expression, so one evaluates to itself. Otherwise, we'd be spending all day here. So now that we have the value, we bind this value to the name on the left-hand side. So the name here is A, and so in the current frame, we say A is bound to the value 1. Notice that this has to be a value and not an expression, okay? and this is the name. Next, um, we have a function definition here, and so there are more rules involved with that, creating a user-defined function. Notice how this is different from calling user-defined functions. Okay? So the first step we follow is we need to actually create the object first. So we draw func, the name is b, right? And the formal parameter's name is b. Okay. And then, when we're done with this step, the next step is to assign this function object a parent, and the parent is the current frame. So the parent is the global frame. We're in the global frame right now. And finally, since we're using def instead of a lambda, we need to bind the object to the same name in the current frame. So now b points to func b. Okay, now we're done with the depth step. Notice how I did not go into the body. All right, so now we have a third line, a equals b of a. Again, it is an assignment, but this time b of a is a more involved expression. It's a call expression, right? So then we have to evaluate the operator and the operands. So what is the operator? The operator is b, which is a name, and how do we resolve names? Well, there are rules for that too. Name lookup. So we check the current frame, and if it's not in the current frame, then we follow the parents until we hit the global frame. In this case, the global frame has the name B, and so we can just uh, say that B is that function object over here, this function object. All right, and similarly, when we evaluate the operand a, a, we have to look up, and the value is 1. So we can erase a for the value 1. And so now we've evaluated everything. Let's take a look at how to, um, how to actually apply the function to the arguments. So we first need to create a new frame. And the way we do that is, uh, let me erase all of this here. Okay. The way we do that is we copy the information from the um, function to um, the frame. So our new frame here, frame one, which represents a call expression B of A. Um, and we copy the information here, b parent is global, great. All this information comes from here. And then the f bind the formal parameter to the argument. So the formal parameter b is bound to the argument which we saw was one, right? And now this will be your current frame. So we execute the code a plus b within the current frame, okay? And a evaluates the name. It's not an f1. So right now we have an f1 whose parent is the global frame. So if the name is not in F1, which is our current frame, we move up to the global frame. And so A, we see is one. B is in the current frame, it's one. So now we hit return here. So we return this expression, which is two. So now our return value for this frame will be two. Once a frame has a return value, it is no longer active. So we can cross out this frame and give two back to the global frame. So now, the whole time we're evaluating b of a, so we can replace b of a with the expression two, and now 
now that we've evaluated b of a, we bind this 2 to the name a. So a previously had a binding of 1, but now it has a binding of 2. Okay, great. And then we follow the same steps for this second line here. I'll do it much faster now. So we evaluate b, b is this function, we evaluate a, a is 2. So now we have a new call and a new frame. So our frame is f2, copy the information from the object, b parent is global. The formal parameter b is bound to the argument a, which evaluates 2, so b is 2. Now we return a plus b, a can be found not in frame 1, but the global, uh, sorry. So now we created a new frame. There's a frame 2 whose parent is the global frame. So we start at our current frame, frame 2, a is not found, but we can find it in the global frame. So A is 2, B is in the current frame 2, so now our return value for frame 2 is 4. So now we've returned, this frame is no longer active, so we cross it out, and we go back to the global frame. So this expression is 4, and so now we rebind A to 4. And congratulations, you're finished with your first environment diagram.